Welcome to worship with Bethel International United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Glenn. I'm delighted that you have joined us today. So now, Holy Week is just two weeks away. Here's what to expect. Palm Sunday is March 28th. Worship will still be online one last time. And right after that, we will have an in-person outdoor parade we're calling the Palm Sunday Pampers Parade collecting hopefully a mountain of diapers, size five and six, and children's pajamas size 2T to 5T. It's all for the Little Bottoms Free Store in Franklinton. Now, you can bring your donations of diapers or pajamas anytime, but if you bring them between noon and one on March 28th, you can see friends, you can see the mountain of items grow, you can meet some staff members from the Little Bottoms Free Store, and if you wish, you can wait and in care Caravan, we will go together to Franklinton to see the work that Little Bottoms Free Store does for women and infants on the west side. And starting that day, March 28th, you can walk or drive through our outdoor Stations of the Cross. Pastor Siong has created a wonderful devotional guide and coloring book to help you be to experience these Stations of the Cross. Come anytime, March 28th to April 4th, stay as long as you like and return as often as you want. On Easter Sunday, which is April the 4th, we will worship in person outside at 10 a.m. Bring your own lawn chair if you can, wear a mask, 
and start praying right now for good weather on Easter morning. If you're an early riser, as apparently the risen Christ was, you will also want to come for the youth group's in-person Easter sunrise service. It starts at 7, 11 a.m. sharp, and they will also stream it live on Facebook. And then, starting April 11th, we are back. We will be back in-person worship inside we will start with one English service every Sunday at 10 a.m., our Korean service at 11 a.m., and our Nepali service at 1 p.m. More information and COVID safety measures are posted at mybethel.org. Now, last Sunday, Janet Rabnerberg began to introduce us to Celebrate One, a local organization that works with women to prevent infant mortality. Today, Janet continues her conversation with Sarah Poston of Celebrate One. I'm talking again with Sarah Poston about Celebrate One, which is an initiative in our community to reduce infant mortality. Sarah is the Southeast and West Side Neighborhood Integration Manager for Celebrate One. Sarah, thanks for speaking with me again. I know that Celebrate One has identified eight priority neighborhoods where infant mortality is the highest in our county. What are those neighborhoods and what specific work are you doing to reduce infant mortality there? Thanks, Janet. That's a great question. Um, and so you are correct. We do have eight or what we would call celebrate one neighborhoods or high priority neighborhoods. And those neighborhoods are, um, you have Franklinton, the Hilltop, Southside, Near East, and then our North area, which is um, Linden, Northeast Northland, and then our Southeast side, um, what we would consider that Southeast side. So that's more of that 4322732 area. And um, by that, what we mean is that they have a higher infant mortality rate than Franklin County does together as a whole in those neighborhoods. And so Celebrate One has a big focus in those neighborhoods where we work very closely with partners um, that have you know, their, their agency is in that neighborhood. They're working with those moms. They're working with those dads, with those families, and we help support them um, through that. So whether that is um, through our community health workers who go out there, we do direct referrals with them. They we meet with moms, they meet with dads, they meet with those families, and they really wrap their arms around them and they make sure that they have everything that they need. So that can include um, resources that could be actual physical things, right? So that could be diapers, that could be wipes, that could be clothes or formula, or it could just be the support of a person. And they may just need somebody to help them kind of walk through their pregnancy or walk through some of those doctor's appointments that they have with their child. And so those are um, a few of the ways that we are out in that neighborhood. Another way is that we do um, first birthday parties and baby showers in those actual communities. And we really just shower our moms and our dads and our families with gifts, with love, with compassion um, and excitement and just show, you know, this is a beautiful thing and it's an amazing milestone to get that child to that first birthday. And we really just wanna celebrate them in general. That's great. I know safe sleep um, is part of the effort uh, to reduce infant mortality. Can you tell us what safe sleep practices are and why is that important? Yeah, definitely. So there are three things at Celebrate One that we really want to focus on. Um, that is reducing our uh, prematurity rate. So those babies being born too early, too small, reducing safe sleep related deaths, as we believe that those are things that's a behavioral change that we can make. And the third thing is connecting the disconnected. And so with safe sleep, we really zone in on those ABCs. Um, you may hear a lot of people say babies should sleep alone on their back and in an empty crib. And that's really what we want, those A, B, and C. So alone, back, and crib. And um, we really wanna make sure there's nothing in that crib, that pack and play. Uh, and so we do education with our moms. We do safe sleep ambassador trainings with the entire community. We give out free pack and plays. And we also give out uh, what we call a wearable blanket or a sleep sack for our moms and our dads for that baby. 
to make sure that they're not putting any blankets into that crib, into that pack and play. And so we really do zone in on that education and just sharing why safe sleep is so important for this infant. Thank you. Sarah, how can concerned community residents like our church congregation help reduce infant mortality? Yeah, that's a great question. We love our volunteers. Um, and so any of those uh, things that we just kind of talked about, so those first birthday parties, those baby, baby showers, uh, you can come and help with that. You can help with any of our partners. We have so many different partners in different areas that are doing the legwork for us. Uh, and so they are in need of diapers and wipes and uh, formula and clothes and car seats. There's all different kinds of things. Um, so reaching out to them. Some of those could be a Little Bottoms Free Store that's on the west side. We have St. Stephen's that's on the north side. Um, the Reeve Avenue Center south side. These are all um, great partners that you can connect with. Or again, you can help with those uh, baby showers or first birthday parties. And then of course, just continuing to learn about infant mortality, continuing to know. Uh, take a Safe Sleep Ambassador training class with us at Celebrate One. Know those ABCs and other things that go along with that and turn around and share that with a family that has an infant. Um, you know, we all say that it takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child, and it truly does. We really want to just make sure that the education, we want to make sure that all this information is out there for everyone. Sarah, thank you for your commitment to healthy babies and healthy families and uh, for the work that you and your team are doing. Thanks again for speaking with me. Thank you.
Greg, and I'm here excited to give you this update on the virtual Belize mission trip. Thanks to your generosity, we have received enough money so far to buy over 100 boxes of food and supplies for the people in Belize. While I'm speaking, you'll be seeing pictures of families that have benefited from your generosity. In one of the pictures, you can see boxes labeled with names and a label that indicates it is from Bethel International United Methodist Church. We were told that the families were very happy and grateful for the support that we've given them. As Matthew 25 says, for I was hungry and you gave me food. Even as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. You will also see a picture of a virtual Belize mission t-shirt. Just like previous years, we wanted to commemorate this year with a t-shirt. Instead of the names of team members on the back, this year we have listed the items that are contained in each of the boxes. If you would like one, you can contact Becky, Greg, or Scott McPhail and place your order. The cost is $20 and orders are due by March 31st. In closing, I'd like to share a special picture that one of the families provided to us as a special thank you to the people of Ohio for their box of food. Again, thank you for your generosity. Hey there, it's great to see you. Today, I brought some Play-Doh with me. I love Play-Doh. I love all the colors that it comes in. I love how soft it is. <laughs> but my favorite thing about Play-Doh is how it smells. I love the smell of Play-Doh. What about you? What do you like about Play-Doh? Good stuff. Play-Doh gets played with in my classroom on a daily basis. We roll it out and then we have some fun Play-Doh stamps and we have cookie cutters and some really cool Play-Doh scissors. All kinds of things are created. The best part about Play-Doh is that you can always turn it into something new. It doesn't have to stay that way permanently. If we leave it out, it tends to harden up and be difficult to mold, but we can keep it fresh by putting it back in its container so that we can make something again and again and again. God also makes us new again and again. It isn't just our bodies that change and grow over time. It's also our hearts and our minds that continue to change and grow as we learn new things and we have new experiences. Sometimes change is hard. Maybe because we're set in our ways and we just don't really want to change. Or maybe because we're happy with where we are and we're scared of messing up. But remember, God is always with us and helping us change so that we can be the best person we can be. I hope during this season of Lent, as you take time each day to focus on God, that you'll also open yourself up and allow God to change your heart and your mind so that you can become the person that God wants you to be. Have a great week. I'll see you soon. All the colors of the rainbow All the voices of the wind Every dream that breathes
With me today is United Methodist activist and teacher, longtime leader, Ethel Johnson. I could not be more proud uh, to introduce my church uh, to a leader in our denomination uh, than Ethel Johnson. Ethel, I wonder if you would tell us just a few words about your story. Uh, where are you from? What was it like to be a black girl growing up when and where you grew up? I was born in um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was a twin. My twin sister died when we were not quite a year old. Our father left us when we were young. I had three older sisters. I had an older brother, but um, he died before I was born. And after our father left, um, our mother moved back to Stanton, to Stanton, Virginia, which was her home. And so I grew up in Stanton, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, mm -hmm. beautiful country, mm -hmm. beautiful country. So I, I lived in a segregated city, went to an all-black school, all-black church, mixed with all-black people. Mm. Ethel, one of the careers <laughs> that you have had is as a seminary teacher of Christian education, of church uh, administration. Um, what, would you, what special gifts would you say you brought as a woman and as a black woman to how you taught and prepared seminary students for ministry? Uh, what, what, I, what I brought as a black woman was really what I learned as a child from my aunt because uh, at five years old my, uh, my uh, mother died and her sister left her job to come and take care of the four of us. And she was a very wise woman who loved children. And she, and I can remember her sayings to us because she used them all the time. Mm. But I learned from her that number one, God loves me. Mm -hmm. God loves me unconditionally and that I was no worse than anyone else. I was no better than anyone else, but I was unique. Mm -hmm. And that there was no one else in the world just like me. And I should be proud of that and, and use that to the glory of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and so that was drilled in me from the time I can remember, and it's just been with me all of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went and, and I worked with the two factions of the church they had worked in together, trained them and what the United Methodist Church was all about. And this is where my work with women came in. Because at that time, everything was male. Yeah. The no women, I mean, they were out there, you know, uh, cooking meals and that kind of thing. But as far as top leadership in the church, there were no women. And women would sneak around <laughs> and say to me, Professor Johnson, I really feel called by God. I said, well, you know, answer the call. But well, I can't do it here. I said, I'm sure you can. So then I would say to, to the um, men and then there were no women leaders in any uh, top, in any top level in the church. 
and I say, uh, you know, if you want to be a part of the United Methodist Church, you have to begin accepting women. We can't touch that man's job, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, you know, let's just get this straight down. If you want to be a part of the United Methodist Church, we have women district sent superintendents. We just need a, a woman bishop. They became a full stage conference in 1992, and they elected their own bishop. So that was really good. And the first woman was ordained soon after they became an annual conference. And and now, you know, they have women just to superintend yep. and everything. Because you told them they had to. That's right. <laughs> I said, no, I know. I said, you know, this is a choice. You want to be a member? If you're a member, you have to accept this. Yeah. If you don't want to accept this, I can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ethel, I wonder if you have a message or a word that you would like to share with women, and I'm thinking in particular of young women in the church today. My message for young women in the church, and it doesn't matter what uh, race or nationality, but for young women, period, who who are a part of the church, I say, be yourself. Mm -hmm. Live close to God. Let God guide your life. And I hope there will be adults in the church who will nurture young people. Because you see, you have to have the, the understanding, the feeling within yourself that yes, you are important just as you are. Mm -hmm. and, and that it, and that you can do anything that you feel God is calling you to do. And, the, the, and uh, that if you are, uh, if you're doing it all by yourself, that's okay because mm -hmm. you are never alone. Yep. God is with you. Amen. And that's why it is Christian education is so important because you start helping children to not only learn this in their heads, but learn it in their hearts when they are very, very young. Because you see, God has given to each of us a mind that we wish to think and reason. And the three-year-old has a mind just like a 53-year-old does. And all you have to do is provide an opportunity for th that person to use her mind. Mm -hmm. And so often in church, we don't accept the fact that children have a mind we used uh -huh. to think and be. We want to tell them what to do in our homes. So often we are doing the same thing. Yeah. And that is not the way we are supposed to live together. We live in community. We are all created equal. And so our most important thing is to learn how to work together. Amen. And you can only do that if you really feel within yourself that this is what God is calling you to do and pray about it. Take time to spend time with God. Uh, but, but 
time of day you choose to do it, but you have to spend time with God each and every day so that you know you have that peace within yourself that what you are doing, God is right there with you. I knew you'd start preaching if we gave you long enough. <laughs> I want to ask you this. You may choose not to answer this, but I'm, I'm going to be bold enough to ask you. Do you have a word or a message for white people in the United Methodist Church right now? Yes. When you look at me, I want you to see me as a black woman and see my color. Mm -hmm. I hate it when someone says to me, I don't believe you. Yeah. Look when you look like I am black. Look at me as black. When you see me, you see your black face. And, and accept my blackness. But that's number one. Number two. Let me reach out to me in a way in which I can feel that you are doing it because you want to relate to me and not because you feel sorry for me or you feel bad yeah, to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is the proper thing to do. Because, you know, we, we can feel when you are sincere and when you are not. And, and so, you know, God created all of us and created all of us with the same very, very basic qualities. And, and so with the therefore, I can do anything that you can do if I have the training. You know, don't put me down and don't put me in a category. And the discipline, I'm saying, just the, the, just the tip. And talk to me about race. Some people say, oh, I don't want to offend you. Offend me. <laughs> yeah. You know? Because I will talk back to you. <laughs> you know, I expect you can take care of yourself. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. Through these years, I have learned. But, but the thing is, just to realize that we are all a part of God's family, and we are all equal in the eyes of God. And God doesn't play favorites. And God didn't make any junk. Mm. You know. So this is, and white people need to get to know black people. Ethel, is there a particular scripture that you live out of? Oh yes. The scripture is Romans 8, I think it's 38, 39. There is nothing mm -hmm. that can save us, that can separate me from the love of God. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And let me tell you, I have leaned on that scripture, especially working with the people in Nigeria who were fighting with each other. And here I come in as an ins uh, as an outsider and a woman outsider <laughs> at that, uh -huh. oh my gosh, you know, I kept thinking, God, you brought me here, you've got to take care of me, and you've got to show me, let me feel within what my next step ought to be. Yet there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate me. Yes, that has carried me all these years. Yes. Ethel, in conclusion, would you pray for the people of Bethel International Church? Oh, yes. That's correct. I have known Bethel International Church, you know, through the years of struggle. Yeah. And, 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 and I am excited about who you are and what you have become. So I am happy to pray. 
Let's pray. Let us pray. Me God, we are all your children. You breathe into each and every one of us the breath of life. I lift up the congregation of this church. I have known it through the years and all the changes it has been through. And God, you have been there. You have been there all along, guiding, nudging, sometimes they listen, sometimes they didn't, but, but you keep slowly, slowly, slowly loving, guiding, and leading them. I give thanks that so many of them have been open to you again and have changed. This church has changed tremendously. I've seen the change in it through the years. For this, I give you thanks. And oh God, there is a great big future out ahead. And I pray that under Glenn's leadership and under the leadership of the officers of this church, that they will continue to lean heavily upon you, heavily upon you, for what their next steps will be. They have come a long way. They have a long way to go. Hold them tightly in your arms. Hold them tightly in your arms and don't let them go as they continue to serve you in this part of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ who showed us the way, I ask these things. Amen. Yeah, well, we are honored that you have taken time to share with us. Thank you.